Hello and welcome to another tutorial video for Thinking Particles 7.3. In this tutorial video, we will discuss the new feature we've added to Thinking Particles, and that is our new programming language, MeL. And in MeL, you can do a lot of amazing things, and I will show you in this quick tutorial with just a few lines of code how we can create particles and control the parameters of particles via a texture map. So let's start right away and dive into how we can do that. The first thing I'll create is just creating a thinking particles particle system. I click the helper object anywhere in the scene, doesn't matter. And I'll go to the modify panel. So now we are going to open up our thinking particles user interface. And what we want to do is just create a particle group and I'll give this particle group the name pool. I just want to pool all my particles I create in there and I'll create a dynamic set and name that create. That's our create dynamic set. In the next step, I want to create our MEL node. And the interesting thing here is we want to create particles and we want to manipulate these particles we've created. So there's many ways to do that. I'm just doing uh, one way where we have parallel access to the particle. So we have a massive parallel processing possibility. So it, uh, it's obviously faster to process this in parallel. There is our new entry, MEL, here. And our entry MEL shows us all the optimized nodes we have that will interact with our programming uh, extension MEL in a highly efficient way. Let me just create now the MEL expression node. And here we go. So right now we have nothing, just the editor button, and then uh, we can have uh, our code added later. So, however, as I said, we wanted to create particles. To create particles, I'll right click again and just use the MEL menu entry. And there we have generators. And that means those nodes, those are standard thinking particle nodes, they have uh, special connectors to MEL to be uh, really efficient. So I'll just pick the position board. And I just make sure I'll order them. You don't need to order them, but I like to have things as uh, I think is logic for me. So let me just, just a few settings. Let's create 500 particles, give them unlimited life and maybe a size of five and no speed. So now what happens is this will create the particles. We need to specify where we want to create them. So let's say we want to have them in the pool uh, particle group. And um, I think uh, that's it. And also what we want to do is assign a shape. So I'll go into MEL as well and look what can I choose or what's optimized for me L processing. I'm just going in here and just pick the standard shape. So I'll have the standard shape here and that will allow me to assign any shape I like. So we can do that later. And then we want to explore how we can create or control particles with texture maps. So I'll go into the me L uh, as well, and we can have a look at where would we find our texture map, and we'll see. Here we go. In the standard, we find our texture map, and all these nodes have special connections or connectors, generator, shaper, and texture map. So let's dive into our MEL code. So the first thing we want to uh, adjust here is, that's for your information. Whenever you start first time the editor, we suggest you to create inputs and do some things. So I'll don't need that. Oh, let me just 
remove the output and start from really scratch. So what we are going to do right now is we want to get or access our particles and we, we do that with our um, generator input. So what we are going to do is just name that particles for the ease of use. So we name that particles and then what we want is not a particle group, we want to directly access the data from the position board. And that would be the generator option. So, and that will allow us parallel processing for these particles. Um, the next input we would need is, let me just go in here and do another input description. Uh, we want to have our meshes or shapes, however you want to call them, um, our meshes here. And we need to make sure we get our port shaper to have the special shaper input type. So that would allow us to connect our shapes. And the next thing I think is we want to control the shapes as well. So I'll just, uh, let's go here and call this shapes. So we want to control what each particle we want to control the shape. So uh, we go in here and I'll, I'll want to have this controlled by a texture map. So I'll just get the texture map in here. So right now we will create, when I press now the compile button, we will create an input port of the generator type that we can connect to our position board. We will create a shaper input that allows us to um, specify a shape or a mesh. And we'll be getting a texture map connection as well. So now when I press compile, we will see in our expression meal node that we have all the inputs. And now I can start connecting the inputs. And we also get if we have had uh, parameters, uh, parameters options, but I have just those inputs for now. So we have the texture map, we have our standard shape, and we have our position board. I just double click these nodes together so that we have a nice uh, layout here. Okay, so now the fun starts because right now we won't see anything. We just created the inputs and we will have all 500 particles at the origin. And that's not what we want. Now we need to uh, spread out or position these 500 particles. So, and um, for now, I think it would be fine. We, we just go with um, random positions. So I'll create a variable called PPOS particle position and because it's a position it must be a vector so we have to specify these uh, three values that's a vector so we can comment easily by just doing the double slash here and position so that we know what we're doing uh, at a later stage and then I want to generate for each component of my uh, vector or position X, Y, Z, I want to specify uh, just a random value between uh, a min and max, so minus 50 to 50. So that's my X axis. So set random X. And uh, same deal for my other axis. So one would be my y-axis and two would be my z-axis. So, and for z, just for the ease of use, we, we just place them flat on the plane. I'll just set that to zero and I don't want them spread out in this square-like manner. So I want a rectangle there. Um, so now we got our random positions between minus 50 and 50 and 20, 20 in uh, 
for the um, X and Y axis. Now let's position our particles. We do that by using the function uh, of set P, P data, particle data. And for set P data, we need to supply our particle ID. So the particles we want to set. And then we need to tell it what do we want to set. So data, and then I can choose from several options and I want the position. So I want to set the position and we have to supply the position and we created the variable pos. So let's have a look. How does it work? What's going on here? So what we have here is we get our particles through, let me just move that over here. So we get our particles through the position born. It creates all the particles in one go with the generator and then in MEL, we will have access in parallel to all the particles. So our MEL code will go through all particles in parallel. So each particle will come in and to access which particle we are actually evaluating is our particle ID PID. That's an internal variable. So the particle comes in, we do the calculation here and then we set the position. So now if we compile and do not get any errors, we should see when we start the simulation again, just start the simulation, we see that our particles are now randomly placed here in this rectangular layout. So that's pretty easy, pretty simple, powerful thing, because now we have full control, parametric control over how our particles are created. So let's move on to the next step. We want to assign, let me just uh, move that here down, uh, place particles. So that's where we place the particles. Um, and that's just the positions of the particles. Um, the next thing we want to do is um, let's control which shape or we want to assign or apply a shape to the particles. So let's do that. How would we do that? We have our input, uh, which is called um, meshes. And we have also our input, which is called shapes, where we uh, get the texture map. So we need to decide how we want to control our um, uh, where we place shapes and which shapes. So for now, we just create a texture map. I'll just bring up the material editor and um, I'll just pick any map we want. Let's say I'll pick the checker and let's just do a two by two tiling here. And I'll just drag and drop the texture map over in here with instance. So we have a live connection and can adjust it in the material editor. So right now I have put a checker in my text map. So based on the checker, I want to decide which uh, shape we are using. So let's do that right now. How do we do that? Let me first create a variable. And we want to create a variable um, that gives us the intensity of the bitmap. So we uh, evaluate the checker and when it's black, it's zero. And when it's white, it's uh, one. So we need to store the intensity of our checker. Um, intensity of the checker. That's where we store that. And then Let's just see how we can access or control the uh, particle shape via the intensity. So I'll just go here, shapes in eval. So we evaluate the texture and for this, we need to supply a position. And here we go. We need to have UV coordinates. 
because we don't have a mesh where we can grab or, or create UV coordinates, we're just in space, we use our particle positions as UV coordinates. So I want to have this from zero to one. And we do that by just a simple uh, trick. We get our particle position divided by 100 because we have minus 50 to 50. And at 0.5 to get into the positive range we, because UV coordinates are always between 0 and 1. And then I think we have everything we need for our UV coordinate or position we have to supply. And then we want to store the evaluated um, intensity in our variable intensity. So there we go. So what did we do here? We used the shapes in eval. So that's our input here, shapes, input. And uh, we get the intensity. So that will decide on black and white right now for the checker uh, which shape to pick. So um, the next thing is what we want to do is, uh, let me just go down here. We want to actually decide now. So we say based on the intensity, if intensity is greater than 0.5, so we know it's white. Uh, we could use any gray value, but it doesn't matter. So we just say if it's greater than 0.5, then we pick the meshes and we use that um, in set, meshes in set. That's the function that will pick from our input port, we call it meshes. Uh, from this input, uh, we will pick, uh, let me just uh, give a space here. We will just use our particle. That's the particle ID. We want to assign a mesh. And then we can say, okay, I want to pick mesh six. And the next thing we can do is an else. If it's not uh, greater than 0.5, so we assume it's black, and then we do the same thing. Uh, meshes in set, we want to set our mesh particle ID again, and we pick mesh 10. So now you might uh, ask or say, um, just do that here. Um, how do I know which meshes are what? So in the standard shape or geom instance, we have a, a list of objects or meshes you've picked and they're all uh, numbered starting with zero. So uh, the triangle is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that would be our mesh six and seven, eight, nine, 10. And that would be our mesh 10. So very simple, very easy. If it's greater than 0.5, we have this mesh. If it's uh, black, we have this mesh. So now I think we have everything we need to uh, check out if we actually have meshes. So let's just restart our simulation. And actually it worked. Isn't that great? So we have our checker. We, uh, as I said, we have a tiling of two checkers. So that's perfectly working. So we got here the this mesh and the star mesh. So that's the power of MEL. Very simple, just a few lines of codes, uh, code and you can do all what you want. So you have full power, full control now over what is happening and when with a simple uh, few lines of code. So let's say, for example, just for the fun of it, now we want to control with the texture map the size of the particles. That would be very, very simple to achieve because we already did some work here. So what we can do is we would just copy shapes 
create another texture input where we say we want to control the size with the um, texture and create that. When I now compile, we have to say size input and because we are lazy, we just copy this with shift and drag and I'll connect that. And now we choose a different texture map. So let me just copy this over here. New and we go in here. Sorry. Um, what did I want to do? Let's say we just want to control the size with a gradient ramp. So here we have our simple gradient ramp. Want to control the size now with a gradient ramp. So what I do here is I'll just drag and drop this instance in here. We have the checker here and our gradient ramp here. So the size has the gradient ramp. So that's done. So now how do we evaluate the texture map? We already did that. So we can also copy this thing here. So what we are doing here is we need to store somehow in the variable our size. So let me just um, define the variable size here. What the crap? Size. And now that we have that, we need to store the value in size. And now we need to be careful because we have a different input. We can't use the shapes or we would use the checkerboard. This would also work, but that's not what we want. So we want now our size input. So we say size in eval. Uh, I duplicated that size in eval. Um, so now we have the intensity of our checkerboard and size in eval is our texture to control the size and we get the size. Same UV coordinates, same everything. So now the only thing left is we need to set the size of our particles. How do we do that? Same deal, set P data. And we say, okay, this particle we're working on needs to change its size, which data we go to size. And then we need to specify the size and we have our variable created size. And just to be sure, because we have the gradient going from zero to one, white would be the one value, uh, we just multiply it by five. And that should be it. So you saw how easy, how great this is to, once you've started and, and learn all the uh, scripting uh, syntax and uh, functions, it's very easy, very fast uh, to create. Let's just compile this one and check if there's errors. And now what we should see when we re-simulate, we actually get exactly what we expected. We have in the texture map, we have our gradient ramp zero, and now we can control with the gradient ramp uh, the size of the particles. If we wanted to do that in real time without always doing the um, sim re simulation, we can just turn on edit on the fly, and that would allow us now to just move uh, the objects here. Let me just go in here and add an gradient here. So you can see we can adjust everything and we can even make sure that we start with a some size and we can just delete this key, move the key here. So we have all these options now to control with the texture map our size and we could control everything, the age, particle age, uh, direction, um, speed, velocity, anything. You can set anything you want based on that. And that's it for our quick tutorial. I know it was longer than expected, but I hope you learned something and also feel the fun and power you have under your fingertips with just a few lines of code.
So happy exploring and hope to see you on our other videos as well. Goodbye.